Hi, welcome back. So in this video, we are finally going to be moving on to remote repository management through source tree. So we finished up with branches and managing the branches. Now we're going to move on to actually moving our repository uh, using the push and pull cycle and doing all of that. So first thing I want to do is go ahead and clarify what are we going to do with creating remote origins? So we've done in the past git remote add origin and then we've done the URL. But in this video, in this section with, with source tree, it's really hard to create a remote origin using the GUI. So we're just going to go ahead into the terminal and create it. But then everything after that is done through source tree. All right, so first thing we're going to do is go ahead and create a brand new GitHub repository. Make sure it's blank, no readmes, no licenses. Uh, so just make sure fresh repository, don't add anything, uh, just like usual and how we did in the past. Next thing you want to do, go ahead and copy the URL. So just as usual, uh, you're going to go and copy this and we're going to add a remote origin. So if you go back into source tree, there's this really handy, handy button in the top right, uh, which allows you to open up a terminal in the correct window. So in the correct path and on the master branch. Next thing we're going to do is go ahead and add our remote origin. So git remote add origin and we're going to paste the name of the URL and by the way if we if you're using git bash to do this uh, it's shift and then insert to paste something so we're going to click enter and there you go the remote origin has been added so next thing we want to do is go ahead and learn about pushing and pulling so we have all of this data here and we're going to go ahead and push it onto our repository so first thing you want to do is go ahead and make sure you're on the right branch, your master branch or whatever branch you're going to use. You're going to click on push. And now you can see here it says push to repository origin. So through the terminal, we actually created and initiated that push pull cycle and created the origin that we need. There we go. So then it says branches to push here. So we're just going to push the master branch. It's the only branch we're going to push. And of course, you're going to push it to which branch, which is going to be the remote master branch. And of course, you can track it or remember it uh, so we don't have to do it in the future. But again, we're not going to be using the terminal, so it doesn't really matter if you leave this on or not. So then we're going to go ahead and push it. This may take a while depending on the size of your project. Of course, you're going to need to log in there. So I'm just going to log in. And notice how all of this is very similar to the process we used in the terminal, except this time it brings up a nice little window for us to use. So we're just going to wait for that to push. And like I said, depending on the size of your project, this could take, uh, you know, a few minutes to even a few hours. So uh, just know that. So there you go. We pushed it onto our repository. Now you can see here we have two branches, master and origin slash master. So just know that the origin slash basically stands for any remote branches that you have. So this could be origin slash error 01 or origin slash dev, uh, depending on whatever remote branches you have currently initiated. So let's go ahead and check out our GitHub repository. Let's go and see how that's looking. So you can see right there we have six commits, one branch. So there we go, everything is working. So the next thing I wanna do is go ahead and add a readme and a license through here. So first thing I wanna do is add a readme. And remember, we usually add readmes through GitHub. It just offers a really nice uh, way to interact with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that readme and commit it. Uh, of course, just as usual, added readme. And we're going to commit directly to the master branch. Go ahead and commit that. So there we go, seven commits. Now we're going to go and create a license. So I'm going to go and create a new file. Just, if, just as we've done in the past, there's nothing different here. License.md. And make sure it's in all caps. Then I'm going to choose a license template and choose the MIT license. So of course, I'm just going to uh, replace my credentials, review and submit, and there you go. Everything is working. Just gonna finally commit it, added license. There we go. So now we have created our readme and our license. So what about pulling into our project here? What do we have to do? Well, it's pretty much the exact same thing. Right next to the push button is a pull button. You're just gonna click on this, and now you can see here, pull from remote origin, which is what we're looking for. And then it says the remote branch to pull, which is going to be our master branch. And like I said, depending on the branch that you're using, this could vary uh, depending if you're on the development branch, maybe an error fixing branch. Uh, but usually you would push these changes 
after you've resolved them. So we're just going to go with the master branch for now. Now you have a few options here. So commit merge changes immediately, which is what we want to do. Include messages from commits being merged in merge commit. We're going to keep that off and create a new commit even if fast forward is possible. Now, basically, we're not going to create a new commit because fast forwarding uh, just allows us to, you know, push it all together. We know without having to create a new commit. So just know that rebase instead of warp merge. Pretty much what's going on here is it's a little technique that a lot of developers use when pushing and pulling. I'm not going to go into rebasing now, uh, but pretty much you're just going to want to keep this off. You, you don't really need to use it most of the time, uh, except for some time in some cases, but usually that doesn't happen. So we're going to leave all three of these off. Next thing I want to do is go ahead and click OK, and it's going to pull everything from our top repository on GitHub into our local repository. And there you go. You can see that it's doing the exact same thing. These two new uh, commits from that we did on GitHub are now here. So that's pretty much it for push, push and pull requests. Now you can see everything is almost exactly the same. We've run through all of this quite quickly. And just as I said with the past, most of this is the same process. It's just conveyed to us in a different way. So there we go. That's pretty much it for source tree. Uh, I hope you learned a little bit from this section. It's just, again, an alternate way to use Git and GitHub, uh, something, you know, a lot of people, some, you know, prefer uh, GUIs over a terminal. So that's just something that, you know, is a personal opinion, but whatever. Now you have two different ways of using Git and GitHub, and depending on your preferences, you can use it. It's always good to learn more. All right, let's move on to the next section.